Hey, what's happening guys? This is Ed Frolish with Ocean Deep Fishing. And today uh, we're going to start our second uh, DIY painting uh, project. So um, as everybody in the whole country, we're in the coronavirus uh, epidemic right now. And it's, um, we just learned, I live in Orange County, uh, Orlando, Florida, and we are going to start a quarantine uh, stay at home for two weeks starting tomorrow, which was uh, Thursday. I'm trying to get some fishing in today as well um, But right now we are going to um, start a painting. What I'm going to do today is we're going to do a dolphin Mahi Mahi uh, painting and um, if You can see Here I have a wooden plaque um, That I made I put together. It's all rough sawn wood. So I put this together. I got the wood from down the street. I had a woodworking mill that used to throw these scraps in the trash and I was uh, kind of trash picking. And that's where I came up with the wood and I just put it together um, with um, some staples and stuff I had in the house. And uh, you can do this as well. Um, you can go to Michael's. They have pre-made pieces of wood like this um, that are raw, some are painted but you can get something like this if you're interested in painting you can absolutely buy something like this if you don't have the ability to make it at home so uh so anyway i told you we're going to do a mahi mahi so what i did i don't know if you can see this you can see the outline of the fish done in light pencil um so the easiest way to do that and how i did it is i went online I went to silhouettes of dolphin, went through till I found the right picture that I wanted to fit on here and I printed it out on my printer and then I just went to a um, UPS store and went to one of their um, printers that you can expand the size and I made several different sizes from that one silhouette that I had to put on here. And then for painting it, we're going to use uh, some references of pictures that I have of dolphin I've caught. And we're also going to maybe take some out of magazines so that we can get the right coloring and stuff in there. So anyway, um, to start this, especially on wood, uh, that's raw wood, I wanna prime it. So I'm going to be using this primer. You can get it at Michael's or any of the art supply stores. It's a white gesso. And it's, a, it's an acrylic gesso, and we're going to use that as a primer. So I'm going to outline the whole fish and do the whole fish white first as a primer, let it dry, and then we're going to start putting the topical um, colors and stuff on that a typical uh, dolphin has. Now, the green and white typical that you see, and I have a painting that i done prior that you can see there. You can see them silver with blue polka dots on. You can also see several other different colors before they turn to that. So anyway, we're going to get going. And we're going to we're going to go ahead and uh, paint this all white, and uh, going to do that right now. I'm going to be uh, outlining the dolphin with this brush here, um, so I can follow the contour of the lines. I'll use a little bigger brush to uh, do the center. So you want to be very important that you don't go outside the line. All right, so we're just going to follow the line. You can see the shape of the dolphin coming in and this is a gesso again which is sort of like a primer it's acrylic paint and this is the first coat we're gonna see how it dries I might give it a second coat and the reason I have it offset to the left is because I'm probably gonna put a little lure or something in here like the dolphins chasing a lure lately. I just haven't decided on uh, what I'm gonna put there yet I know I'm going to put something there, so I left a little space here. But if you were going to just do this as it is, I would have centered it a little bit more. Uh, so if you're looking at it, that's the reason why. Get a couple references of uh, fish books or whatever that have the dolphin in, and you can reference the different colors and techniques, and you can get the eyes so you can get the eyes to where they're supposed to be just right. Um, you're going to have some texture and outlines of the mouth, um, which you'll see on the photograph. So. This is basically just an overall picture. So I'm using this uh, line brush right now. It's a liner brush or a long haired brush or um, well, there's several different names people call them. But I have a tiny little fin down here 
that I want to uh, highlight and get primed and I just had a too big of a brush I was doing that with so I'm just going to come down here. Now when you're working with wood like this, the rough wood, um, when you put a primer on like this sometimes it makes the grain of the wood stand up so when it's totally dry if you run your hand across it, it's going to be a little rough. Well besides being rough on your hand it's going to be rough on your brush too. Um, so if you want to try to make it as smooth as I, you can in order to paint on I would let this dry, dry overnight, then just take a like a 600 grit sandpaper and just sand the area that you've uh, primed and that will knock down any of the wood grains that have stood out and it'll give you a smoother finish. And then if you want to, if you feel it, you need a second coat of the gesso before you start putting your paint pigment on. And take your time when you're doing this because this is raw wood. If you go outside the line or you make a, a ding, it's going to be kind of hard to uh, cover it up. So. You want to take your time on the very edges and make sure you get it just where you want it. Um, prep is everything as from painting to whatever you're doing, you know, it takes longer to prep and get everything right than it actually does um, to do that. So anyway, that looks pretty good. I got a couple spots like right in here. Okay guys, well, I'm going to sit and let this dry for a couple hours. And as soon as it's dry to the touch, I'll show you how we sand it if we need sanding. And then uh, we'll get started on the, top colors of there so stick around we'll be back shortly uh, all of our paint is dry and as I was telling you you can feel the little burrs on there where the paint was so I'm just gonna take I'm gonna take a little sandpaper just have it laying around the house and uh, I'm just gonna sand the area that's painted All right, we're good to go. A rag and uh, just wipe the dust off a little bit. It helps the paint stick better. Okay, guys, so um, this is what I made as the uh, from a silhouette that I blew up. I cut it out. That's what I put on there and traced it out. And I also drew some eyes. I did this on another one too, so this is um, this is the second time I'm doing it, except I'm doing it in a different direction versus this way. My last one I did the other way. So you can see I drew on the lines. So I want to get the eyes and the mouth uh, and the gills up here where I want it to be. Get that sketched on there so we get the eye proportionate to the mouth and everything. So I have some blue tape, painter's tape. Um, that I'm just gonna put on here like that to keep it. And always use blues, blue painter's tape. Um, there's a couple other ones, Green Frog, and I think there's another one that'll help um, where you can pull it off real easy. So then in order to transfer that onto what I painted, I have some carbon paper, just like that. I'm gonna put that underneath there, just real quick so it doesn't go anywhere. And I'll be right back. I have a pencil using the carbon paper and I'm just lightly and then I'm going to make the mouth and just like that you have it transpired onto all right so we have our contour where our eye is our mouth shape so we're proportionate to everything so um, I have um, this is something I drew and some coloring that I did um, one of my pencil drawings so I'm going to use that as a reference uh, I'm also going to use my um, painting that I already did as a reference. And then I have another book that I uh, put pictures in. So I can use that as a reference as well. Um, and that one's probably going to start off with a reference with that one. And then um, just see how I did the other one. Okay, guys. Um, I decided to hold off a minute. Um, these boards were tighter together when I first put it together, but because it dried and it, it seemed like it bowed a little bit, I have this big spot in here that I don't really care about to have in the middle of the fish. If it was just little, small, I wouldn't mind it. But I'm going to get some uh, wood filler. I'm going to fill that up, and then I'm going to paint it white, and then we're going to get back to um, the colors. All right? 
and I'll show you how you do that once I get it. All right. All right, guys, I'm back again. Um, I went down to Lowe's, got some platinum patch. Uh, it's weather max. So in case you want to put this outside, it'll, it will, um, adhere to the weather. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to put some patch in this line here so that when I paint the fish, I don't see this dark line. I'm not worried about the ends here. I'm going to leave that natural, but I just want to do the um, fish itself. This might take a couple coats, but they say to mix it, mix it up. I'm going to push it in as deep as I can to the uh, crack and I'm going to let it dry. And once it dries, I'm going to see if um, I need a second coat or just a little bit of sanding and then we can get with our, and I'm going to get a little bit on the tip over there and we're going to just push it in and I'm going to try to go as far as I can and try to get as much excess off as you can when you're doing this. We're going to do the whole length of the fish. Get it in there good and by doing this the way I'm doing it now it makes the putty kind of rounded and it makes it larger than what the two pieces of wood are. It kind of makes a bubble so you can sand it down smooth and hopefully once it um, is painted, it'll be less conspicuous. All right, let me get this finished and I'll be back with you as soon as this dries. All right guys, it's been um, about an hour. Um, it's uh, pretty much dry to the touch, so I'm gonna get some sandpaper. We're just going to um, smooth, smooth out this spot. If you can see imperfections on here that maybe bother you now, you might want to fix them because when you paint it, they're going to stand out a little bit more. And that's the center of the body of the fish. And we're going to have a lot of detail, polka dots. Um, uh, we're going to have a color transition of the fish from the green, um, bluish on the top, green into yellow with a white belly. So um, that's going to show up. So. I'm almost happy with it. I think I need another coat just to um, touch up a little bit of imperfections there. So I'm going to do a little bit more sanding here and see how that comes out. Guys, so um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I have, um, let me bring this over here. I have a little imperfection right here. I have a little spot there. And I wouldn't worry about that spot if it was just the raw wood and we didn't have this big crack we did, but I'm going to go ahead and um, fix that. And then I have a little line where the um, fill sunk in. So I'm just gonna redo this line, let it dry again, sand it, and then I think we're good to go. Anyway, it's gonna be the same process as the first time. And uh, important too, if you're doing the sanding and stuff over there, I've taken a, a cloth, terry cloth towel, and just make sure that you wipe all the dust off real well um, so that it uh, paint doesn't roll up on your brush. And I have my palette here with uh, my different paints that I'm going to start with and I'm um, just going to mix them on the palette here as I go. I'm going to start off light and put a little bit of dark in there so just make sure you get plenty on the brush and we're going to follow the outline of the dolphin right now. And I'm going to just darken this up just a little bit I'm taking a little bit of my olive green, mixing it in with this color here just to darken it up some. All right, you wanna go right down the back, the back line here, lined out, and the top part that's still white, that's going to be his top fin. Um, and for those who don't know, this is a male dolphin, not a female dolphin. And the difference between the male and the female is the male has a, a rounded edge and a kind of a straight front head where the, the females will start from the mouth and they'll have an arch and curve. So the bulls, which are the males, have a more of a stern square head where the females have rounded. So you can, that's how you can kind of tell. And this is just our first coat. So... Um, we're going to be blending some colors together with this one color and then as we go and layer the colors we'll put more 
uh, colors you see in the dolphin as we go on. I just want to get the basic outline of the fish right now. And then we're going to reference, as we do the deeper details of the fish, we're going to reference our pictures and that stuff that we have there to reference where they go. I don't know if you all fished for dolphin before. Um, it's one of my favorite uh, fish to fish for. Um, typically when they're around, um, you have a lot of fun because there's usually a lot of them in a school. Um, so it's possible to catch 20 or 30 or 40 fish at one time. Of course, now the limit is, is 10 per person. Um, I don't remember if there's a, uh, a bag limit per boat or not, but I know it's 10 per person per day. They have to be measured um, 20 inches or bigger, and that's from the tip of the mouth to the fork of the tail. It has to be 20 inches. It's not the overall length. It's to the fork. And these fish here are some of the most colorful changing fish that you've ever seen in the sea. Besides having a good fight on your hands, you get a little bit of a, a show also with them. And table fare, you can't get any better than fresh dolphin, man. They are really good. My favorite, my favorite way to um, to eat the dolphin, I make a Cajun and I get a cast iron pan, put it on the outside grill, on the burner side, get the, uh, the pan really hot, put a little bit of oil in, and then you want like a stick of butter. And I cut the dolphin up into like one inch chunks, put them in the pan, just turn them over quickly. And you know, fish quick, fish cook quick, so you don't have to um, leave them in there forever. All right, so we're gonna just start. We're gonna we're gonna start blending a little bit. Now the eyes, I've already painted some of the stuff just so I know where the mouth is and stuff. So I'm just gonna go over it, but I'm I'm gonna it's transparent so I can still see where it's at. But you want to get this yellow. And you want to go from the body, start at the bottom and work up into the green so that you get a transition. You don't want a straight line. We're going to do yellow on the belly and then we're going to come back and we're going to put some white in there. They usually have a nice white belly. And then this is another fin down here that we're going to put in as we go along. Trust me, it doesn't look like much now, but it will, um, as we incorporate all the colors and do all the detail over there, this thing is going to pop. I'm not coming down to the very edge because I want that to be as pure white as I can on the belly and incorporate it into the yellow so that it shadows the yellow and then goes to pure white on the belly. So, and then we're going to, um, we're going to tip the, you want to try to do some soft lines in here. Now by soft lines, what I mean is you don't want a distinct hard line from white to green. You want it, you want it to kind of blend in, cover that up, and we'll blend it in a little bit more. All right, so basically, you know, there you go. You got your green on top. You got your yellow on the bottom. Um, we're going to put some blue up on the top. Um, and I'm using cobalt blue, and I'm mixing... Let me clean my brush out. I'm going to mix some white with the blue. Um, just so it's a little lighter. Make sure you, you clean your brush really good. Because if you, as you go back into school, with your primary colors, you remember that. Blue and yellow make green. Alright, so we're just going to um, come up here. Now this is a lot lighter than I wanted at the end. But we're going to, um, we're going to put in some texture. Alright, we're going to put in some texture when it comes over there. To the fin, we're going to put um, where they have um, structure going that comes at sort of looking like veins. And if you want to see some more of my paintings, you can go on Facebook, go to Edward J. Frolish Fine Arts. I have a lot of my paintings and stuff that I've done previous on there. Um, this one will be on there when it's finished. And um, it will be for purchase if you guys like it. You want to hang it in your office or just uh, you have a porch or patio outside. Or maybe you have a yacht. You want to put it in your yacht or a boat. Or maybe you have a, a beach house 
any of those things can this will fit in your decor um, so if you buy something from me it's pretty much going to be an original nobody else is going to have anything like it I might do something similar but you're not never going to have the same identical so that's kind of unique to my paintings I, uh, I try to keep it all original now some of my pencil drawings I do I do have copies I have numbered copies if anybody's interested in there and you can go and see all those on my Facebook Edward J Frolish Fine Arts and the dolphin have kind of like a like right in here which goes just above the eye from here it kind of that's kind of like that's a distinguishing line from kind of like the top of the fish to the bottom of the fish um, where you where the uh, you get the transparency from the dark to the light to almost the white belly so it's gonna have like a line in there so that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna try to accomplish now with this here you paint the fish a little brighter than they actually are because it just gives you a little bit more brightness to your paintings so make sure you wash your brushes out right away um, acrylic paint dries quick that's one of the reasons why it's hard to work with but um, you wash them out as soon as you're done with it and your brushes will last a lot longer all right so we're just going to do the roof of the mouth okay so we're going to come in here and we're going to cut that off a little bit straighter I'm going to just tip that mouth a little bit and all about painting is lights on darks darks on lights that's what um, gives you the three-dimensional look and the depth that you want eyebrow I mean not an eyelash I'm going to make like an eyebrow coming over so we're going to get a little bit darker here okay we're outlining I'm going to outline the whole top of the fish here to make it stand out some okay and then we're just going to put some highlights in here coming down representing sort of like a bone structure of the fin all right. the same up on top here we're going to do all right guys that's going to be about it for part one because I don't want this thing to get too long um we'll be back with part two shortly and I'm going to show you how to um, detail and kind of get the uh, final colors into your fish and the blending of it and then we're going to do the detailed on part three we're going to do the detailed outline and um, probably a lure or something out here I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet I'm going to do a feather or a lure all right guys well listen this is going to be the end of part one I want to thank you so much for spending your time checking this out. Um, this is my DIY segment on my Ocean Deep Fishing channel. Uh, thank you so much for spending your time watching us. Uh, we're going to have part two coming out uh, pretty soon, which is going to finish detailing most of the fish. And then on part three, we're going to finish up with um, a lure or a feather or whatever I'm going to put out here and the final details of the fish right before it's done and then we'll sign our project so thanks for watching look for part two coming up next and until then tie lines everybody thank you so much for watching